1988 Honda Civic with a 1.5 liter engine. We've got a really interesting case study here. Symptoms are intermittent stall and hard starts. Typically doesn't do it while he's driving down the road. It's typically at a stop or when he's trying to re-accelerate from a stop. We've had this problem now for six months, have not been able to identify the condition and we're doing some checks on this and see if we can duplicate the fault. Okay, a few things that I'm not gonna show just for time is we were able to duplicate the condition sitting in the shop and what we found is the car would bog and it wouldn't accelerate no matter how much fuel you gave it. So we connected a fuel pressure gauge during the condition, we have good fuel pressure. It's not a fuel problem. Also, previously in the six month period, he's been fighting this problem. It has died a few times and they've tried to add carb, carb clean or starting fluid and the vehicle will not start with fuel. So this also confirming that it's not a fuel issue. So our focus is now toward the ignition system. Okay, real quick, quick tests we can do on spark issues is to use an inline spark tester and I have shown this before in a previous video. Similar condition here, I'm concerned that I'm losing spark and what I've done is I've rigged up this distributor cap with a socket to extend inside to the electrode inside and then I'm just clipped on here and then I have a plug wire for the number four cylinder installed on that doesn't matter which cylinder in this case there's only one coil so I'm just looking at the strength of the spark what I'm trying to capture here is this this vehicle to die and what we were seeing was the spark was getting worse than it is now and actually breaking up I'm gonna take you over to the scope next while we're waiting for this thing to do what it does and show you a couple things over there. Okay, the two measurements I'm gonna make is coil primary current, which is my amp probe connected to the feed wire going into this distributor on this two pin connector. It's black with a yellow tracer. And I also wanna show coil negative voltage and I'm attached to the blue wire on this side. This is gonna give me my primary voltage. This is gonna give me my primary current. We're gonna look at both on our scope. Scope I'm using, Pico Scope 4000. Let's take a look, see what we have. Okay, a few things we want to pay attention to on this waveform. Blue trace is my coil primary current, and the red trace is my coil negative voltage. This is secondary feedback in this primary waveform. Don't worry about this spark line changing it's burn time because remember I have on that one cylinder that inline spark tester that's changing our air gap so ignore the changes in this spark line. First view I'll tell you what I don't like on this already is the height of this coil primary ramp is only three amps. Probably one of the lowest amperage waveforms that I have seen. Most coil primary ramps range from 6 to 10 amps on the peak so right away I don't like that. The fact that it's squared off at the top is telling you that that's where the module is limiting the current flow or in this case it's called an igniter. So if we look at the red trace pay attention to some of these this would be at this level here would be battery voltage and the lower part right here would be where this igniter is applying a full ground to this coil. And you see that that's where this ramp jumps upward pretty sharp. And then at the point where it levels off at the top, that, that mirrors this limit section right here where we're adding resistance to the ground side of this igniter. So the module is controlling that. So the two lines I wanna pay attention to would be this red line right here and this blue line up here and you can already see that my amperage has dropped just me talking here we're now down to 2.9 amps of current at the peak of this ramp 
while we're waiting here, I'll show you guys a real quick case study I have. It's actually in my book. And this is basically what, what I'm doing. Section 22, no start, no spark problems. And I have in here this very condition that I, I believe that we're having with this vehicle, and it's right here. This was actually off of a Mazda. The condition on this Mazda was, was basically what we're dealing with, which was a weak spark condition. This car would not start. And what I'm showing in this picture is a current ramp, this green trace right here at one amp, and you see the limit section here where the, the module's actually causing this. This is not a coil problem. At first thought, you say, well, low amperage is gonna be a bad coil. But in this case, you need to understand the current limiting of, of an ignition module or an igniter in, in this case. Ignition module, igniter, same thing. So this is before we replaced the igniter. A picture to the right is after replacing the igniter. Now we're at six amps of current flow on that coil primary ramp. This is what I'm seeing with this Honda and I'm trying to duplicate it for you. So that was section 22, page 20. Certainly you guys can refer to that at a different point in time. Let's go back to my scope. And you see right away, even though the car is still running pretty good, you see right away that our amperage is low on this coil. And I'm hoping to catch this. Uh, while we're waiting, a few other things I guess I could show you. Notice my trigger is set on channel B. And I can certainly set it in other locations. I could go to channel A, but I want to show you what that looks like on channel A. So right now I'm triggered off channel A at around one amp of current in a rising direction. And the issue with this is you see that it's bouncing back and forth sometimes. And the reason it's doing that is this voltage spike that's created by the collapse of the primary actually has a rise at the same trigger point at one amp on the other side of the ramp. And so with it having two trigger points of the same slope and the same level, that's gonna cause that to bounce back and forth and so the reason I chose channel B is I want to be up here on this top of this red spike because there's only one point that crosses that level and that slope. So just a little word on trigger while we're waiting here. So we're gonna go back to B. I'm gonna move my trigger level up into that red spike up in this area and you see how much more stable that pattern is. All right, we're still running, trying to get this thing to act up, and you can see our amperage continues to drop on this primary ramp for this for this coil, and so I'm down now to about two and a half amps. Uh, what we found is when this thing drops down to about two amps is when this thing starts to misfire really bad. And just to talk for a second about what's happening here is the, the module or igniter is actually limiting the current at that level and what that's doing is not allowing this primary winding to make a full magnetic field. And with a weak magnetic field, what we're gonna end up with is, is a weak spark. A lot of guys in the field, you see weak spark, you're gonna throw a coil at the car. A coil will not fix this condition. What we're seeing is this is caused by an igniter issue, not a coil issue. Okay, well, while we're filming here, one of my students asked a good question and it was in relation to a resistance problem. And certainly it was a valid question because as you can see, our amperage is still dropping and changing. And you know, we're down to two amps now on this ramp. And what I said to him was certainly a resistance problem with this distributor could be an issue. We could have a bad ground on this igniter. And what I'm telling you guys by this waveform is that's not the case. If you focus on this lower area right here where this computer or module or igniter is applying a full ground to this coil. And that would be from this section right here to this section right here would be where we're applying a full ground. I'm at 600 millivolts. 
And I know if, if we were talking a sensor ground, we'd say that's high voltage for a ground. For a high amperage circuit, which this would be, that's not really a problem. That is a good ground. I'm not worried about this distributor having a bad ground. What we're worried about would be the limit section, which would be from right here to right here. And this is what's gonna keep that ramp from going any higher. This would be what we could call, and I'll give you a number here. So we're 600 millivolts with the quote, good ground. And right here, which would be our quote, uh, intentional bad ground or resistance added to the circuit intentionally, we're at 11.3 volts. 11.3 volts, let's get, let's get a battery voltage measurement real quick just to compare what that is, what kind of drop we have. Battery voltage is 13.9, and so we have a 2.6 volt drop in that section where we're only applying a ground and dropping the voltage by 2.6 volts. That's pretty low, and you can see the result here. I'm down to 1.7 amps now. In fact, what just happened is, you see how the screen froze on me? I have my trigger set on repeat, and this is a, a warning on trigger settings. What's happened is it's become so weak of a spark that my spike is no longer reaching that trigger point, so I need to lower my trigger point to make that visible, and now it's, it's there again, and you see now we're down at 1.5 amps of current, and What's happening here too is this red line is continuing to increase. Let me get my battery voltage one out of the way. In this limiting section, we're now at, it's still 11.3, let's watch this. Yeah, it's very weak. This is our symptom, hopefully the camera's picking that up. While the car is still running, let me get you a quick shot over at that spark tester. And again, this is not the greatest test in the world doing this, but it's, you know, old school and it's certainly valid. Let's watch this spark. That would figure. You see the spark is erratic, it's breaking up. Let's go back to the scope. All right, so to sum this up, lots of crazy theory and stuff I'm talking about. I think what uh, would be very valuable here is to show you what this looks like with a good igniter in it. One last measurement on the amperage on the peak so we can compare before and after. You see we're at one amp now. Certainly the reason why this car is misfiring is we're not saturating this primary winding enough. By saturating the winding, I'm talking about current flow. We need to have good current flow through this coil. We need to make a strong magnetic field. It needs to collapse. And that's where our secondary comes from. A good, strong primary winding equals a good, strong secondary. If you have a weak magnetic field on the primary side, we're gonna have weak spark. That's exactly what we have on this vehicle. And again, this is not a coil issue and we're basing that off of this pattern. And you guys can refer to that case study that I showed you a second ago in my book, section 22, page 20. But if you look at this, this is an igniter issue. In fact, we just had a jump up there as I was taking that measurement. We're now back up to two amps. I'll show you what a good igniter looks like next. Okay, this is gonna be the after shot after replacing this igniter. We used a used igniter out of an old distributor, had the same part number. So we'll see what we got. Go ahead and start it. I wanna see that initial, initial one there for a second. On initial crank, this is what we were looking at before, is this limit section. And you see we're limited at 6.8 amps as opposed to where we were before. We were at, what, one amp when this thing started to misfire? Certainly we're building this coil to a lot more saturation than the old one. This is definitely going to be a fix. I think the interesting part about this though, the characteristic of this ramp is different than the other one and really shows you what the igniter has to do with this. 
is that ramp and how it reacts in that limit section that we were talking about, which really is non-existent on this one, has a lot to do with the igniter. And uh, I'm not sure why the same part number wouldn't have a limit section, but I like the peak of that ramp a lot better than what we were looking at. 6.7 amps is where we are. And I think the lesson here would be pay attention to that when you have weak spark or spark that's erratic. Don't be in a rush to throw a coil in a car. In this case, it was a bad igniter. So that is a fix.